Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. My name is Mariam Lemu and welcome back to what I'm calling my lecture series. Like I shared with you the last time, this is just some lectures that I've given over the years that when people ask me for them, unfortunately, there's always a technical issue and so on. So I've decided to re-record them and share them with you. I hope it will be of benefit. Now, this is the second of three episodes that I'm going to be sharing with you that I'm calling Shine Your Light Brightly. During the last episode, I shared with you that whether we like it or not, people are looking up to us as role models. But what are we actually modeling? What are you known for in your neighborhood or professional fields or in school and so on? Wherever it is, every walk of life. What is your reputation? Are you known to be honest and trustworthy in character and competence? What are we teaching our children? What are we teaching those that are looking up to us? Now we need to stop sitting around and complaining about what's wrong in this country uh, or in our environment or with people around us. We need to stop comparing notes as to who has had the worst experience. Unfortunately, we seem to focus often on just the negative. We need to start doing what is right and sharing what is right. Now there's plenty of right if we look around. Now we need to also change our weak batteries for some whose light is not shining as brightly as it should for others to look up to and emulate. We may need to recharge or replace our batteries and focus on solving problems, not compounding issues. There are two quotes that I love and I share this with so many. The first one is if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. My mom has raised me in a world of possibilities and whenever I come to her with problems, she always asks me to come up with a solution. Then she can help and bring ideas and so on. So what are the solutions to the problems we are facing and how are you contributing to solving them? The second quote that I love is you don't need a title to lead. You don't need to wait for others to take the driver's seat and take charge and make things happen. Now, as the youth are growing and hearing about the hopelessness, the apathy, the cycle will continue. Ask yourself honestly, are you making things worse or are you making things better? Are you part of the problem or are you part of the solution? The truth of the matter is the reality today, youth are not looking at prophets sadly or imams or spiritual leaders in society as their role models or their heroes. Unfortunately, it is musicians, athletes, um, sports stars, reality TV stars, and even some politicians. They think these are our role models because they've got the biggest cars, the biggest houses, and they also want. But what about the source? Who are these role models? The trouble is they don't have enough to choose from. They don't have enough models, people modeling exemplary behavior for them to choose from. Even in movies we produce, we don't seem to care to create heroes. Look at what Hollywood has done. They've been successful in convincing their citizens and the world that America saves the world. We often see this in so many of the movies. Even in their comics, they have heroes, Captain America, Wonder Woman, and so on, and they are wearing the, the colors of their flag. They've created this sense of national pride and making a difference, being a hero. Unfortunately here, Nollywood, Caniwood and so on, what are they promoting? Crime, 419, prostitution, witchcraft, things that are eating away at the fiber of our values and culture. The youth today are lacking enough who can speak to them in the language they relate to, that they can connect with, understand them, not judge them, and redirect them and guide them. What we need to do is to inspire them. If they don't relate and connect with us, we are wasting our time. The country's future, our Islamic identity and pride lies in our hands. We really need to believe that, that we can make a difference. So we need to shine our light brightly and not wait for someone else to shine theirs for us or to shine theirs first. So again, I ask, whose permission are you waiting for to take that driver's seat and shine your light brightly? I always ask that people be very careful Often we look at people who are actually making efforts, however small, and we end up putting their lights out. We rant and rave about footballers, about Nollywood actors and Hollywood actors and so on. Whatever small contribution somebody is doing, encourage them. Don't go with but or start to judge them and criticize them. What are you doing yourself? It's so important we are careful about this. Focus on yourself and your contributions. Now I want to ask you a question. Did you at any point in your life have somebody influence you significantly in a positive way, guide you? Think about it. 
And if you did have somebody, I ask you before I go forward to please pray for them. Always pray for them for what they have done to you. But now, what are you to others? Since you had somebody influence you, what are you to others? Are you significant in people's lives? Are you paying forward what someone else did to you? Whose lives are you touching? And what legacy are you going to leave behind? And is it even worth leaving behind? We never remember those who did things only for themselves. We've never buried anybody and say, oh, we're going to miss them because they took good care of themselves. But often we will always be remembered for things we did to and for others. So add to what you are currently doing to be more useful, to make more of a difference, to touch more lives and to influence more people. Like my father always says, improve upon it, whatever it is you're doing, improve upon it. Now, when you do something that benefits others, that is a meaningful life. That is the Prophet's way of life. Like Allah says in the Quran, is the reward for good anything other than good? Now, remember these questions, please. How significant are you in the lives of others? How significant are you in the lives of others? Is your presence felt? Will your absence be noticed? And then who will cry when you die? Who will cry when you die? And what will you be remembered for after you are gone? The fact that you are watching this video means you want to be better. You want to grow, you want to learn something, however small. However, because we attend Islamic functions, because we watch inspirational videos, it doesn't mean we are better Muslims for it. If nothing good comes out of us from what we have learned, because you go to the mosque doesn't make you a good Muslim. Because you fast or go for Umrah doesn't make you a good Muslim. Now, while all these things are good, they are so far from sufficient if it doesn't make us better so that we can do better, if it doesn't help us become a better parent, become a better friend, a better daughter or son, a better, more responsible employer or employee, a better husband or wife, or a better citizen. Now, inshallah, during the next episode, I shall be talking about solutions to some of these challenges that I've raised and the challenges we may be facing. Now that we have recharged our batteries or replaced them, what's next? I promise you, inshallah, that if you can apply some of the lessons I've been sharing with you, that you will find your life is so much more fulfilling and more meaningful. Like I said before, if you enjoyed this episode and other episodes, please forward it to others so it can be of benefit to them as well. Please join me next time. Assalamu alaikum.